Hello, today I'm going to solve IMO 2018 problem 5. The problem tells us a sequence of positive integers ai satisfies the following sum is an integer for large enough n. So let's call this sum as n, and the natural idea is to subtract sn from sn plus 1. Because this cancels out the first term and it gives only three terms remaining, which are a n over a n plus one plus a n plus one over a one minus a n over a one. And by assumption, this is an integer. This form is not particularly nice because we get some fractions and well, it's not very easy to manipulate fractions which gives some integer. So a very simple trick is to do a minus 1 on the right-hand side. So minus 1 again gives us an integer, but we can factorize it out very nicely. So let's see what it gives. So a n over a n plus 1 plus a n plus 1 over a 1 minus a n over a 1 minus 1 give us, so if I do a n over a n plus 1 minus 1, it gives us a n minus a n plus 1 over a n plus 1. And this, these two terms give us a n plus 1 minus a n over a 1. So now we can easily see, we can factorize these uh, fractions, which turns out to be a n plus 1 minus a n times a n plus 1 minus a 1 over a n plus 1 times a 1. So now we know that this is again an integer. So now we get a nice expression which is an integer and this is true for any n larger than big N. The next step is to perform a prime factorization for each a i. So Let's do it first for a1. We can like factorize into p1 of power alpha 1 until pm of power alpha n. And we can do the same thing for a n plus 1, and we get we may get some like same prime factors, p1 to pm of some power, and other some prime numbers q1 to qr. So let's study first these like other prime numbers. So if q is a prime which divides a n plus 1, but q does not divide a1, then q does not divide a n plus 1 minus a1. So necessarily we have q divide a n plus 1 minus a n because q divide a n plus 1 in the denominator, so necessarily if we get an integer, q must divide a n plus 1 minus a n, and which means q divide a n. The nice thing is that we can do this in power, so if q of power beta divide a n plus 1, then necessarily we get q of power beta divide a n. And by recursion, this implies that q of power beta divide a big n. So to simplify the presentation, I now need to introduce a notation given an integer a and a prime number p. I denote vp of a as the largest exponent of p which divide a. So the largest exponent of uh, p in the factorization of a. It has some fancy name called periodic valuation but I will just call it vp of a. So previously we have showed that if q is a prime number that does not divide a1, then vq of a n plus 1 must be smaller than vq of a n for any n larger than n. This is nice because this tells us vq of a n this sequence is decreasing and since they are all integers numbers and it is a decreasing sequence which means there exists some m depend on q such that v 
VQ of AM equals to VQ of AM plus 1 for any n larger than MQ. So we have proved that for any prime number that does not divide A1, the power of the this prime number in the factorization of AN gets stabilized. So now we need to prove a similar result for a prime number that divides A1. So let's say P divide A1, and we denote alpha 1 as the largest exponent in the X factorization of A1, and alpha n as Vp of An and alpha n plus 1 as Vp of An plus 1. So the main result we are going to prove is that the maximum of alpha 1 and alpha n plus 1 is smaller than maximum of alpha 1, alpha n. So if this is true, this again is a sequence of positive integers which is decreasing, necessarily they get stabilized. And to prove uh, this result, we only need to prove that the following implication. So we only need to prove that if alpha n plus 1 is larger than alpha 1, then alpha n is larger or equal than alpha n plus 1. So why? Because if alpha n plus 1 is smaller or equal than alpha 1, then maximum of alpha 1, alpha n plus 1, is alpha 1, and which is necessarily smaller than the max of alpha 1, alpha n. So this uh, inequality star naturally holds. So we only need to prove the case when alpha n plus 1 is larger than alpha 1. So now let's assume alpha n plus 1 is larger than alpha 1 then necessarily the largest exponent of a n plus 1 minus a1 will equals to alpha 1. And uh, by this expression, we know that the largest exponent of a n plus 1 minus a n plus the largest exponent of a n plus 1 minus a1 will be larger than vp of a n plus 1 plus Vp of A1. And this is alpha 1, this is alpha 1. So necessarily, we get them cancelled. And this means Vp of An plus 1 minus An is larger than Vp of An plus 1, which implies Vp of An larger than Vp of An plus 1. So this is exactly what we want, alpha n larger than alpha n plus 1 if alpha n plus 1 is larger than alpha 1. So in order to prove that alpha n plus 1 matches alpha n for large enough integer, we need some kind of inequality in the other way around. And in fact, we are going to show the following inequality replacing max into mean. So we prove that mean minimum of alpha n plus 1 alpha 1 will be larger and equal than the minimum of alpha and alpha 1. So let's call this star star. So we consider two cases. If alpha n is alpha n plus 1 is larger or equal than alpha 1, then the left hand side equals to alpha 1, which is larger than the right hand side. This is truly hold. And if the second case is when alpha n plus 1 is strictly smaller than alpha 1. In this case, we can like again consider the powers of p in this fraction. So we notice that vp of a n plus 1 minus a1 will equals to vp of a n plus 1. And by this uh, condition, we have that vp of a n plus 1 minus a n will be larger than Vp of uh, A1. And notice that we, the power of A n plus 1 now is, is alpha n plus 1 is strictly smaller than alpha 1. So in order to have this condition to be true, we necessarily need alpha n plus 1 
equals to alpha n. And in this case, the left-hand side equals to the right-hand side, so star start hope. Now we are able to conclude, because by the first inequality, we get a decreasing sequence of integer, which is uh, lower bounded by zero, so necessarily for notch n, they will be equal. And the second inequality gives us a, an increasing sequence, but at the same time it's upper bounded by alpha 1, so necessarily, again, it will be equals for some notch n. So this means there is x some big number m p depend on the prime number p, such that the maximum of alpha n plus 1 and alpha 1 will be equals to the maximum of alpha n and alpha 1 and the minimum of uh, alpha n plus 1 alpha 1 is equals to the minimum of alpha n alpha 1 for any n larger than mp and this implies that alpha n plus 1 equals to alpha n for any n larger than mp and note that this is true for any p that divided a1. There are finitely many of them, so we can put, like we can select a large enough m such that the following statement hold for any p. And also previously we have proved that if some other prime number q divide a m, then necessarily q divide the first a n, so the big n, and this one has also finitely many of them, so which allow us to conclude the statement.